Hello, I'm Ryan from GrowthBook, and today I am going to show you how to feature flag an A-B test with Strapi CMS, Next.js, and of course, GrowthBook. To give you a sense of what you're getting into, here's what we're going to build in this video. It is a page with three product cards on it. You can see that the, the last product card is a little different. Every time we refresh, we get either one variation or the other, and that's because it's running an A-B test. And what we're going to see in this video is how you can set this up with Strapi, GrowthBook, and Next.js. There's a few things you need beforehand in order to do this tutorial. The first one is a GrowthBook account. You can go to growthbook.io and set that up for free. You also need a Strapi instance, either running locally or in the cloud. And then finally, you need a Next.js uh, app that has the basic integration set up for uh, Strapi and growth book. And what that means is that you need to be able to fetch strappy content and you need to have the growth book SDK uh, set up and running. The good news is there's lots of uh, resources which I'll link below on how to get that done. So this is a really powerful and customizable integration. So let's get to it. The beauty of this integration is that it works with almost any strappy content. That means you can likely feature flag or AB test with the content you already have. The only real requirement here is to return an array of objects, and those objects can be any kind of components or any kind of data that you get back. For this tutorial, we'll create a product collection with a dynamic zone that holds the different product components. Let's get into it. Let's first create the product card component. In Strapi, go to the content type builder and go to components and create a new component called product card. Then add some fields like name, description, image, etc. And then in our front end, we'll use this to build out our React component. All right, let's now create a product collection. So we'll click on create a new collection type and call it product. And now we'll add a new dynamic zone field to it, which we'll call products. And we'll use the existing product card that we created in the last step. Now we just need to save this collection and then we can start adding content. All right, let's create a product collection so I go into the uh, product collection and I'm going to add my product card component now. And I am going to add a second one because we're going to be A-B testing both of these. So in the first one, I'm going to start putting in the details like the name here. So this first shoe will be called the quantile. I'm going to paste in the description and then add in the other fields here. So the price is $169.99. Four point seven rating seems good. One hundred and fifty six reviews, and it is available in five colorways. And the last part of this now, we just need to upload an image for it. So I'm going to go and grab an image off of my desktop. This will be the white shoe. Looks good, and now we need to add the other one. So what's going to happen again in that collection on the Next.js site is we are going to run an A-B test that sees which of these performs better toward whatever metric we want to set up, whether that's clicks, add to cart, checkout, all that sort of thing is testable, but we're here just setting up the content. So just about done here, adding in the second uh, shoe. I'm going to add in the new image. Upload it. And once I save this content, then we are all set to set up our A-B test. Now we can add our feature flag and A-B test. In GrowthBook, I go to Features. I go to Add Feature, and I'm going to call this Feature uh, Flag Shoes. It's going to be a number and it's going to default to the number zero. And I click create. 
I get this little pop-up about the code implementation that we don't need right now. And now I'm going to add an experiment to the feature flag rule. So I'll uh, be creative and call this shoe test, click next, and all of these defaults look good. It's going to be a 50-50 split between the control and the variant. The control will be zero and the variant will be one. And now the feature flag and experiment are set up and live. All right, I'm now here in my Next.js app and I am open on this helper function, which takes in the content from Strapi and the growth book uh, feature flag and then spits out whichever variation is supposed to be shown. So I first bring in the type from growth book and then set up my props with the different types. And then uh, there are three arguments that you need to pass in. The first one is GB or the growth book instance that you get when you set everything up. Then there is the variations. So that's the content that you get from Strapi. So that will be those product card components. And then finally, the feature flag ID. So we set up that feature flag called shoes. So this would be that shoes uh, ID. And when you go in here, then what happens is that we use growth book to evaluate the feature flag value which depends on the user ID, it'll either be placed into the control or the variant. And then based on that, we get then either zero or one. And that zero or one applies to your content in Strapi. So it's a zero based index. The zero will be the first element or the control. And then one will be the second element. Um, and you can set up as many variations as you want. It just doesn't have to be two. Next, then let's see how this fits together in the page.tsx file where we actually render out the content. All right, we're now in page.tsx where we are using that helper we just created to render out the variation. So you can see that I'm passing in the growth book instance, the shoes to test, and the feature flag. And then when I come down here, uh, this is where that content is actually being rendered out. So I have the shoes that aren't part of a test being rendered. But then also here we have the product card with that variation content being dynamically rendered depending on the user. So you can see that it's quite easy to set up some patterns where you bring in content from Strapi, the use growth book to EB test it, and then dynamically render that content as needed. That's it. So pulling that all together again, this is what it looks like when that content is rendered on the page. And what's exciting here is that once you set this up, you can actually just change out the content in Strapi without touching a line of code and have those tests running and then analyze them in growth book. And we just kind of touched the, the tip of the iceberg of what's possible because you can use advanced feature flag rules. You can do all kinds of different tests. You can do kind of canary rollouts. You can do all kinds of things with this pattern that we've learned here. Uh, connecting growth book with Strapi and Next.js. So we have a whole written tutorial that'll be linked below that goes into a little bit more detail and um, has the code available to copy and paste. So check out the written tutorial or join our Slack community to learn more about experiment-driven product development.